Welcome to this short demonstration on using the code centric features of the IBM Rational Rhapsody modeling tool. The addition I will be demonstrating is called Architect for Software, which is a subset of features also available in the developer edition of Rhapsody. The primary focus is what we call code centric development. When using UMR modeling with code generation, you can really think of two extreme viewpoints. Whereas model centric development emphasizes the ability to generate code from UML abstractions, code centric emphasizes the ability to reverse engineer existing code without changing its layout and allowing developers to make changes entirely in their idea if they wish. Rational Rhapsody supports code centric working using settings to tailor the reverse engineering and round trip process. These are particularly valuable where you have existing code under development or if you're initiating a new project based heavily on existing code. I will therefore show how we can import code into IBM Rational Rhapsody. As part of the import, I will get Rhapsody to automatically create diagrams to visualize structure before making changes. Another feature is the ability to integrate with IDEs such as Eclipse and Visual Studio. In this example, we will work with Eclipse and use the workflow integration plugin provided as part of the Rhapsody installation. So let's start the demo. We're going to start with some C++ code in Eclipse. This has been developed and compiled using the C and C++ development tools plugin. The Eclipse CDT essentially provides a rich integrated development environment. You can download it for free from eclipse.org. You can see here we have a simple application with a number of classes. The main creates a game controller object and then invokes a run game method on it. Run game has a while loop that invokes the draw and update position methods on a ball object. This while loop continues until the escape key is pressed. If we do a clean build and then run the application from a command window, we can see that the ball bounces around the screen until we press escape. So currently the code has no design documentation. Let's create a Rhapsody model to catch the design using the internationally recognized UML notation. We'll begin by launching the Rhapsody Architect for Software Edition and creating a new C++ project called Console Game on the desktop. We will also add a user profile to set up a number of default properties like display options. The project is currently empty. However, we can use Rhapsody's reverse engineering dialog to import code and bind it with a model. Reverse engineering is similar to compilation. If our project is in Eclipse, we can seed the reverse engineering tool by selecting the import from Eclipse option. We can then select the project that we want to import. If we hit finish and then return to Rhapsody, we can also see that the reverse engineering dialog has selected the C++ code to import. And if we look in the advanced dialog, we can see that the reverser has captured a number of include directories and that we've chosen to populate diagrams. Let's start the import. We can see from the log window in Rhapsody that the reverse engineering was successful. We now have classes in the model. The code is now bidirectionally synchronized with Rhapsody. If we right click and choose locate in Eclipse, we can navigate to the related files in Eclipse. Conversely, if we right click in Eclipse and choose locate in Rhapsody, we can navigate to the element in Rhapsody. You'll notice here that Rhapsody has captured not only the operation name, but also its implementation body. As well as bidirectionally navigating, I can also make changes and have them bidirectionally synchronized. Let's add a comment to the run game implementation body in Rhapsody. Notice that when I navigate to Eclipse, we can see that the change was generated into the code. If I make a change in Eclipse and return to Rhapsody, we can see that the model is updated automatically. This ability to keep the model and code in sync 
means that I can make updates in either the model or the code, whichever I feel is the most productive for the change I need to make. One area where UML is particularly productive is when we need to make structural changes, such as adding new classes and relationships. If you recall, one of the reverse engineering options we ticked was to populate diagrams for each package. If we right click on the game controller class and choose locate on diagram, we can navigate to the diagram that Rhapsody created. If we double click on the tab here, we can switch to Rhapsody's full screen mode and see the relationships between the classes graphically using UML notation. Notice here that the game controller has a unidirectional association to the ball class. If we choose locate in Eclipse, we can see that this represents a pointer to a ball called its ball. If we scroll up, we can also see that the sprite class has a usage dependency to NT console, and that this represents a hash include in the code. Using the bidirectional navigation, we can quickly gain an understanding of the relationship between C++ constructs and their UML counterparts. Finally, we can see that the ball class has a generalization to a sprite class. Essentially, a ball is a type of sprite that moves around the screen by virtue of its implementation of the update position operation. Let's make some changes to the model now to extend our design to include a back class that is capable of hitting the ball. Let's create a new class diagram called Back Collaboration. We can drag on the sprite class and add a new class called Back, which is a type of sprite. We can also say that the game controller wants to invoke operations on a bat object called its bat. We want to construct the bat at a particular position. So let's add a non-default constructor with an XY position. And a color. From the UML notation, we can see that the sprite has a pure virtual method called update position. We can tell this from the class diagram because its name is written in italics, the UML notation for an abstract operation. The inheriting class must therefore provide a concrete realization for this method. We can use the realize base class option in Rhapsody to add it to the class for us. Let's navigate to Eclipse to add the implementation for these new operations. We can see here that Rhapsody has generated a header and CPP file for us. So we can add the base sprite class constructor to the initializer list to create a sprite at an XY position with a height of 4, width of 1 and a given color. In terms of the update position method, we want to move the bat up and down when the A and Z keys are pressed. Notice here that we can use the autocomplete features of the IDE to improve our productivity. We want to decrement the Y position if the A key is pressed. And increment the Y position if the Z key is pressed. Uh, the Z key is also known as the Z key. If we locate in Rhapsody, we can also see this implementation has been round tripped in. Notice also that the game controller has a pointer to a bat, so we need to update its constructor to create a bat. We also need to update the destructor to delete it. In run game, we can now call the draw and update position methods for the bat.
If we build and run now, we can see that the ball and bat are now displayed and that the bat can move up and down. The final change I'm going to make is to get the ball to bounce off the bat. Fortunately, there is already a line intersection algorithm in my NT console class that I can use for this. To make use of this, I'm going to add a new method to the game controller class to handle the collision. Rather than make the change in Rhapsody, let's make the change entirely in Eclipse. We will add a new a private method called handle collision between that handles a collision between a ball and a bat object. We can then use the Eclipse refactor menu to implement the method. So we now have a new method. So let's invoke this in the run game loop. Once we've done this, we can then rebuild. And if we run the application, we can see that the ball now bounces off the bat. This illustrates how codecentric working allows you to work entirely in the IDE if you like. Some developers may prefer this, while others like working visually. Depending on your IDE, some aspects are often best performed in the IDE where you can make use of integrated compiler features. Other aspects, such as adding new classes and relationships, are often more productive in UML where you can use diagrams. Notice that if I return to Rapsi, that the model has been kept up to date with minimal manual effort. If I look in Rapsi, You'll notice that the class diagram for the source view has in fact been automatically updated with the new BAT class that we added. This means that I can use Rapsi to generate design documentation. For we can also use Rapsi in UML to develop artifacts that complement the design and code, such as use cases, activity and sequence diagrams. These features help communicate the design to other people and to ensure that key information is not lost or locked in people's heads. To summarise, Rhapsody supports code-centric as well as model-centric workflows. The key thing about code-centric settings is that they subtly shift the emphasis from code generation to reverse engineering. This enables Rhapsody to document existing code without changing its structural layout, minimizing the impact of adopting modeling on existing projects or where layout preservation is critical to success. As well as working entirely in code, you can still make updates in the model. The important thing is that the design is kept relevant and accurate. This is particularly important in the latter stages of a project when the code is considered king. Thank you for your time. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact your local IBM team or Rhapsody point of contact.